Well, hi guys, um, it's Simon here, and I'm doing another video, and this is a video about um, double stops, but I'm using uh, the song uh, Rise by Bed Eddie Vedder um, to show you how the double stops all fit together in the scale. Um, and this video also is about um, the fretboard. I'm going to try and concentrate a lot on the fretboard and ha how it fits together. Because a lot of music theory talks about numbers and letters and sounds and, and, and not really like geography of the fretboard. So you're trying to imagine um, that you're a it's like standing in a street. Um, looking across the street, you see a hotel. On this side of the street, there's a, a hostel, a pharmacy down at the end, and cinema and stuff like that. It's just like that, but on the fretboard. Um, each distance and direction has a. Um, uh, you, you think of visually, but afterwards you want to think of um, with your hands. So you want to do it to start with by looking, and then try to play a lot by um, by, by not looking at uh, the fretboard at all. Um, one way to do that is just to play in the dark, just to shut the lights off. That'll force you to play without looking. Um, the, um, the, what I'm using here is an octave uh, mandolin, which is, um, it's the same as a mandolin, but it's an octave below. So the, uh, if you're using a mandolin, it'll, be, it'll just be a, an octave below. Um, but it should be easier for you to see the, the fretboard. So uh, let's go to it right now. Um, I'll talk about it. <coughs> um, right, so what happens with the, with the song, at least? What we're trying to do is we're... We hear the song, and we're going to try and play the song by ear, but kind of, but do it by imagining that we're on the fretboard to do it. If if you can try and imagine it like that. Um, so um, the uh, the song itself is in G, and um, you know I'll tell you that to start with. Um, and then the, so the first thing you do, uh, there are two things you do when you hear that a song is in G. Or, or, or someone says, let's play a tune uh, in G. This is what you think is here. Look, see this paper I've got here for you. Is, um, I think, I hope you can see that. Is uh, immediately to mind you think CG, uh, GCD. GCD, that comes straight to mind. And that's because these notes, G, C and D, all form major chords in the key of G. Um, this is really important because it, it's in terms of the fretboard it shows the symmetry of it um, so what you need to do is memorize that if you can memorize that off by heart you you really gonna jump forward a, a really well really progress well um, so that's it so for example if someone says the song's in C you th immediately think uh, CFG immediately immediately so that's one thing um, you're gonna need to know um, so what, what you've got now is you're thinking um, uh, it's in G, so where are the G's? We've got a G on uh, four zero, four string zero fret. I call it uh, four zero. It's on four zero. Uh, there's a G. So um, now that you know you've got here is the like the root. You need to find all the other G's. They, they, they need to suddenly kind of appear, like like, like by magic. Um, and the reason is because imagine the song was in C sharp. You need to know where all the C, other C sharps are as well. And um, to do, you'll do that to start with um, visually, um, but afterwards you want to do it with feeling, with, with your fingers. So here, here we go. Uh, it's a 4-0, so then you jump up a string, up 5 frets. There's another G. At 3-5, at, uh, there's another G. Up another string, up another 5 frets. It's at 2-10, uh, second string, 10th fret. Up another string, up another 5 frets. It's at 15, one fifteen. So these are all, um, and notice that the, uh, this line of 0 to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, that, that line goes in that direction, like a diagonal line. Um, that's up one string. Go up two strings, like from this G here, you go back two frets. So you go back one, two, and up to there. That's two frets. So now, to jump up three strings, you go one, two, three, and you go up three frets. So again, with, with um, C sharp here, up three, um, three frets. So that's another C sharp, just there. <laughs> um, so now you've got the, uh, the Gs. So let's concentrate on this G here. That's, it's because mainly because it's sort of in the middle of the fretboard. There's a G here. 
What's the next thing you're going to try and find? Next thing is the fours and the fives. Remember, from this paper again, you're looking for four, the, you're looking for the C's and the D's. And the, again, the reason for that is that the shapes are the same for all the other um, major chords. So um, the, the five is in the fifth direction. So this is a one. Um, so this has to be a five. Um, this C sharp, oh no, D sharp, is, um, its fifth is here. You just go in that direction. So you've got one here, five there, and the four there. Now, because you've got a four here, that's a five. So it's five, four, one, five, down to the four, down to, up to the one. Now, imagine this, um, this zigzag shape now. It's one, four, five, one, four, five, all the, all the way along. That's um, really important to remember, to memorize. And it's kind of cool because it's, it's right in the center here. Now I'm gonna show you why it's cool. When you, um, um, well, I'll explain this first. Here is um, a, uh, a chord. I don't know if you can see the writing on my fingers, it's come off a bit. But um, this is a G chord. Um, there's the G, there's the B, the D. One, three, five, G. There's the third, one, two, three. Four, five, and that's a D. Uh, the D would be there. So there's one, three, five. Now, um, when you play a double stop, you're only playing one of them. So let's take one off. So now this is a double stop, not not a chord. Um, now the the thing about double stop is that um, they're both uh, the strings are adjacent to each other, they're both next to each other. So you basically you got this note, and you're adding a string from below, or adding a string from above. So you're looking for them. And the strings you're looking for are threes and fives. And that's because um, we're looking for major and minor chords. We're not looking for any uh, of the other ones. The, there is, a, there is a, the seventh, but we'll talk about that maybe later. Um, but anyway, we're looking for major and minor chords. So we're looking for threes and fives. Now, as I said, you take the five off. Now you've got one and a three. So you've got the one and the three here. One and three double stop. Um, because of the rule, the diagonal rule, that's another three. So you can either play that one, or you can play that one. So notice, to play um, a major double stop um, with the three, it's, it's just there. The, th the other three is too far up to reach, for, um, so it's got to be there each time. Now, um, what, what if you played um, a double stop that's one and a five, with the three missing? Well, there's the one. There's the five. There you go. And because of the diagonal rule, two fives. So you can either play above or below. Remembering also, if you play above, it's the note that's above that's um, dominant. So this note is above. The, the third above is dominant. Here, the five above is dominant. Uh, meaning, you, you, you kind of hear that note more than the other note below. Now, so we've done one and three, and one uh, and one and five. Um, there are threes and fives as well. So, for example, the, um, there'll be a five there, and this is a three. That's, that's, that's a, um, um, or you could play um, a five here, and it's third. Now, notice also, this is the five and this is the three. Notice the both of them, uh, I'll try and keep my fingers out, both of them transition diagonally. So that's the double, um, no, ooh, that's the double stop there, and that's the double stop there. And see how they, they, they both go in that rule. Um, and that's kind of cool, because you can, um, like for example, the one and the three, you can double stop it up to there. So you see how they, they, uh, they, they have this rule that makes it fit. Now, we've done threes and fives now. now Here's the kind of the important thing about it is that if I'm playing a, a one and a three, then um, uh, the f the five is missing, right? But what if it, it was a six? Well, if it was a six, meaning we, we instead of playing one and five and the three as a chord, so that's a G chord because it's got the three, the five, and the one. It's a G chord. Instead of playing this five we're going to play a six instead. And the reason we play a six is because we've got a one and a three, double stop, 
And someone else in our group suddenly starts singing a six or playing a six on the bass or something. So we've got our double stop, one and three, someone plays a six. Um, um, we, we don't have this five, it's missing. So what happens then? We're playing the, the three, the one, like that. And this actually is um, E minor. It's the relative minor of G, of, of this note here. The relative minor. This is the E here. Um, so all of this to say what? All of this to say that if you play a one and a three, it could mean that there's a five with it, or it could mean that there's a six with it. If there's a five, it's a major. If it's a six missing, then it's a minor. So with these two played, you're not, you're not sure. It could be major or minor, we're not, you know. Some people call it modal, I think they, they call it that. Um, but it's like, it's, it's uh, ambiguous. If you play the one and the five now, if you listen to the one and the five, it, um, it sounds very centered, or well, to me it sounds very centered on the, the one. And the reason for that is, you've got the, the chord here, take the three out, you've got the one and the five. The reason why it sounds centered is because there are no other major or minor chords in the G scale that have a one and a five in it, both the one and the five. Um, which means that if your audience, or you, hear this double stop, you're immediately going to think of the G. Um, and that's something to think about um, with double stops. Same thing with the uh, three and the five. You've got double stop three and five. There's, remember, that's the five, three. Um, it could, um, this three and the five, it could be, not the six, it, this could be a seven here. Um, there's a seven there, look. It could be a seven, um, which would mean, mean it would be a B minor, or it could be the G. So we've got a choice between, um, if you play a 3-5 double stop, it could be either um, B minor, meaning that one, kind of cool, or if this was, um, uh, uh, sorry, if this 7 was actually um, the 1, then it would be that, which sound, it sounds very major. See the difference? And that, again, is the difference between um, having a three and a five, there's the three and a five, and, and not knowing what the other one is. It could be that one, uh, the seven, one, or it could be the seven. So here's the double stop, or that. So that's something, it's kind of cool to, to remember that anyway. So that's with the double stops.